Hi everyone, my name is Carol. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Michigan in the School of Information. Unfortunately, I can't travel outside of the US right now. So I'm happy to have this virtual option and it is my pleasure to share this work with you today. This paper entitled Trauma-Informed Social Media Towards Solutions for Reducing and Healing Online Harm has been years in the making. I've been studying and applying trauma-informed approaches for over a decade. But over the last three years, I've been extending my knowledge in HCI and design spaces. My co-authors and I draw on our experience and expertise as social workers, psychologists, designers, and computing researchers. While we spend considerable time thinking, reading, and talking about trauma, we acknowledge that this topic can be challenging for some, and we encourage readers and listeners to take care of themselves. Trauma is a global health epidemic. According to the World Health Organization, 70% of global people experience at least one traumatic event in their life, and almost one-third report four or more. Trauma can happen to anyone, but is more commonly experienced by those who experience oppression and marginalization. So what is trauma? Trauma is much more than simply going through something very stressful. It's about a life-changing event that can have profound impact on the mind and the bodies of those who experience it. Retraumatization occurs when the person is reminded of the original event, causing them to experience it all over again as if it was happening in that exact moment. Retraumatization can be obvious or not so obvious, but it is usually unintentional and almost always hurtful because it exacerbates symptoms and struggles. A large body of multidisciplinary research has identified 11 types of trauma, which we group into eight. And for the sake of time, I unfortunately can't review each one of these. But I think what's important to point out is that trauma is much more than an individual person level experience. Trauma is experienced by groups, communities, collectives, cultures, and societies. There are also important historical contexts that must be considered. Understanding trauma importantly includes understanding how individuals, groups, and communities relate to it on a deeper level and how they are impacted by it. There can be long lasting effects after experiencing a single trauma, let alone multiple repeated or enduring events. While many people, groups, and communities who experience trauma go on to live lives with very little, if any, difficulty, others experience adverse effects that can be deep and life-shaping. At first, you might think that trauma is a far-reaching topic for the HCI community, but last year, Chen and colleagues published this paper at CHI. And although they sparked and demonstrated interest, many researchers and practitioners have long been studying and working in trauma-related spaces, and we happily join the course of HCI people conducting and doing this work. Well, related topics are extensively researched. Much less has been studied about how trauma manifests on social media, especially by the HCI community. Despite the fact that we know trauma is all too common in mainstream online, and it can and does have life altering and unfortunately sometimes life ending impacts. So now at this point you might be thinking or wondering, okay, Carol, so if trauma is so pervasive and impactful, what can we do? How can we do better? And do you have ideas for us? Well, I'm glad you asked because my co-authors and I believe that a trauma informed approach to social media might be the answer. We focus on the three most prominent components of the social media ecosystem, design, moderation, and the companies themselves. Our overarching aims are to synthesize and extend this rich body of literature, and in doing so, provide a lens for the HCI community to evaluate aspects of social media. In offering this unified lens, we contribute it shared vocabulary, a collection of sensitizing concepts, and a mapping that can be a source for generating new concepts and practices. Trauma-informed social media stems from trauma-informed care. Simply put, trauma-informed care considers the traumatic experience when diagnosing, treating, and supporting clients or patients. There is no single path to becoming trauma-informed. To become trauma-informed exists on a spectrum, from being trauma-unaware to proactively and intentionally becoming trauma-responsive and then trauma-informed. All trauma-informed approaches are enacted through six guiding principles, which attempt to reduce the likelihood of re-traumatization. They include safety, trustworthiness and transparency, 
peer support, collaboration and mutuality, empowerment, voice and choice, and cultural and historical and gender issues. These principles are not a checklist. Rather, they are sensitizing concepts or the ingredients to this recipe. They are also an in inherently interrelated, build on each other, and are not intended to be applied in a lateral way. We purposely connect the last principle throughout the chain because it underscores the entire approach. To be trauma-informed, one must be inclusive, equitable, just, and intentional. In making recommendations, we start by offering some trauma-informed design strategies as a starting point. In offering them, we aim to show the committee how what they are already or currently doing may or may not be trauma-informed, and then provide them with a few new tools for their toolbox. In the paper, we outline six design strategies, five of which I have listed here. But for the sake of time, I'm only going to cover the first one very briefly. Content warnings are one of the most widely used tools to prevent secondary or vicarious trauma, but are they helpful or harmful? Recent research has explored their effectiveness, and while some studies suggest they might be supportive, more find that they have no effect or may even be harmful, as they can be disempowering, victimizing, and marginalizing. Content warnings can be extra counterproductive for those with severe trauma histories because of trauma denial. Trauma denial is this innate process that our brain sometimes does to protect us from further harm. Imagine, for example, this person is alone and scrolling through social media. They encounter a content warning that then invokes their denied trauma. That then sparks harmful memories and sensations, which can have long-lasting effects on this person. For these tools to be valuable, they must be embedded in a broader, holistic, trauma-informed approach like the one offered in this work. We also uh, outline three content moderation strategies as places to start. But again, for timing's sake, I will briefly review the last one, supporting and protecting moderators. Many people share potentially traumatic experiences on social media, which content moderators must engage with as part of their job. Witnessing these experiences can be very harmful. To help content moderators cope, decrease their burnout and distress, social media companies can enact safety by implementing interface decisions that in trauma-informed ways, some of which we outline in our paper. They can also offer trauma training to moderators and have a dedicated team of trauma-trained leaders and coworkers. Company-wide changes are also necessary, which I briefly mention next. Because all trauma-informed approaches aim to address the complex ecosystems that enable and exacerbate trauma, the companies in which these decisions are made must also be trauma-informed. You cannot have pockets of designers, moderators, employees who are trauma-informed in a company that not, does not support this vision and mission. In this paper, as a first step, we provide an adapted version of the Missouri model, which is an organizational change framework. Because this is such a complex part of trauma-informed social media, I invite listeners and readers to read the paper and reach out to me with any questions or comments. So now you might be thinking, after all of this information, or as a way to summarize, what are the key points you want me to walk away with, Carol? Well, I'm glad you asked. Trauma is very common, and it often changes people. Now we know that users and moderators can be traumatized by current design, moderation choices, and strategies. But the good news is, this is all fixable and preventable. Applying a trauma-informed approach to social media leads to platforms, products, and services that are safer, more trustworthy, more empowering, inclusive, and frankly, just better. And who wouldn't want that for their users, employees, and beyond? Because as Tad Lasso said the other day at the White House, I truly believe we should do our very best to take care of one another. Thank you for listening. I want to acknowledge that this work was supported by the NSF. I thank those who have helped me along the way, including my team. And please feel free to read the paper and reach out with any questions, comments, and concerns. Thank you so much and be well.